Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy, is on the air, in person, to get you to eat Wheaties. Fellows, girls, again, Wheaties bring you Champions in Action. Hang on for thrills. Action. Here comes the champion of the railroad. Here comes the Hiawatha. And there goes the champion. There goes the Milwaukee Railroad's new great streamlined locomotive. An orange and silver bullet streaking across the country on the fast Chicago to Minneapolis run. There goes one of America's great trains. A true champion of the rails. A thrilling new train with a cruising speed of 100 miles and a top speed of 120 miles per hour. And today, Jack Armstrong and the fellows and girls listening in salute the Hiawatha, the first of the speed liners. And now, all you fellows and girls, just listen to this. Here's what Bill Dempsey top-notch engineer of the great bullet of the rails, the Hiawatha, says about your favorite breakfast dish, Wheaties. Quote, Before taking the streamlined Hiawatha on a fast run, I want to eat a big, man-sized, man-style breakfast. A breakfast that hits the right spot and tastes well. That's why I go for a big bowl of crispy toasted Wheaties with plenty of milk or cream, sugar, and fruit. Wheaties fixed this way make a real breakfast of champions. Try it. You'll say, just like lots of railroad engineers say, Wheaties taste great. Unquote. Do as Bill Dempsey and some of America's greatest railroad engineers do. And put Wheaties on your own breakfast table tomorrow morning. Eat the big, substantial breakfast dish that really sticks to your ribs and helps supply lots of that food energy a wide-awake fellow or girl needs for the energy demands of work and play. You'll say, like lots of champions say, Wheaties are my dish all the year round. And now, Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. Yesterday, Jack made his way safely across the treacherous ice floes, carrying a line to the Pelican. And here we are a short time later. The breeches boy is working, and the crew from the Pelican is being rescued one by one. Here comes one of them across the ice now. Listen. One boy, men. Lift him clear the minute he comes on board. We've got to start the breeches box without a second's delay. Aye, sir. Oh, I hope it's Jack. It's not, Betty. I can still see him over on the Pelican's deck. He's standing by the rail with Captain Hands. Oh, he ought to wait so long. Well, he's doing what he thinks is right. He knows he'd have a better chance of coming across the ice than any of the crew. Aye, but the ship may go down while he's standing there on the deck. Oh, goodness, yes. The whole stern is blazing now. The ice must be melting around her fast. If she slides free of it, she'll sink, all right. Aye, and in a hurry. I don't like the way the flames are spreading forward, either. If they reach the forward mast, they'll burn the buoy room. Oh, dear. Northrop, how many are left over there besides Jock and Hans? Can you tell through the glasses? There can't be many. We've already brought over 17 or 18. There's only one that I can see. Send him below with the others and get that breeches back. Quick, man. Aye, back she goes. Over with her, man. Hold hard. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, dear. There'll be two more before Jack comes. No, only one, Betty. Captain Hands will be the last to leave his lip. Aye, he's man enough for that. No doubt he's tried to get Jack to come before this. There seems to be some sort of argument going on right now. Hands are shouting and motioning the other man to get back. I believe he wants Jack to go next. Then things must be getting desperate. Yeah, no doubt of it. And I see who that other fellow is now. I thought there was something familiar about him. Who do you mean? Who is he? Robert. For goodness sake. Robert. Gee. Oh, I'd forgotten about him. So, Robert, sir. Well, I certainly hope Jock comes ahead of him. Captain Hands must have had it in for him to make him wait this long for his turn. But somebody had to wait. Aye, but I'm thinking Hans is enough of that traitor, but now the man has no backbone. They've got the breeches boy on deck now. Hans means for Jack to come, all right. Oh, is he going to? No, he's stepping back. Robert's is coming. Hans is raving at him, too. There's a pull on the line. McGregor! Aye, Captain! She's ready, men! Pull her back! Heave with a wheel! Aye! Pull her back faster this time! It can't be helped if you bump him over the ice! Get him across quick! Do you hear? Gee, Captain, do you think the pelican's going down? Something's wrong, Billy, or Captain Hans wouldn't get excited. And Jack and Captain Hans ought to climb down on the ice while there's still time. Jack ought to. 
I'm not sure Captain Hands will leave his ship if she starts to sink. Is she slipping any? Can you tell? She's a little lower in the stern. That's where the fire's been fiercest from the very start. But the bow's still high. Then she's all right for a while. You can't tell, Billy. The ice is sure to be melting fast around the stern. Just a little clear water back there will give her room to slide down stern foremost. Oh, dear. That must be why Captain Hands is worried. We'll make Robert tell us when we get him here. Faster, men! Heave on that rope! Oh, I almost wish Jack would start back over the ice. I believe there'll be time. Robert is almost here. Stand by the grabby men. Get him out quick. Send him up here when he's aboard, McGregor. Aye, aye, sir. I'll bet he'll never want another ride like that. Aye. I'm kicking myself for not bringing him back on the island on the penguin. Then we'd have Jock coming aboard and fist slip instead. They've got him. They're lifting him out. Oh, I hope he's not hurt. He's not. He's standing on his feet. Forward with the men. Watch the go. Robert, stand forward. The captain wants to see you. Aye, that I do. Come here, Robert. Yes, 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 Captain Campbell. I, I... You needn't be scared anymore. You're saved, man. It, it's not that. I, I had the wind knocked out of me, that's all. I'm grateful to you, Captain. Do it. What's wrong on the pelican? Why was Hans raving at you? <laughs> He's got it in for me. He made me wait till all the rest of the men have been brought across. We know that. But why? What was he excited about when you left? Does he think the pelican's going down? No, not right away, unless... Unless... Well, unless what? Unless the gasoline explodes. Oh, gosh, racer. What's that you say? Is there gasoline on the Pelican? Yes, an extra supply for the plane, but it's stowed forward. That's why I didn't mention it to the captain when the fire started. The fire was aft. I thought the men could put it out. But, great Scott, it should have been thrown overboard anyhow. Aye, now I understand. No wonder Hans turned on you, Robert. And I think I know what happened. You didn't mention it to him because you were afraid he'd ask you to go below and get it. I might have been trapped down there. The lights were out. None of the other men had go, and there's no danger even now. The flames are nowhere near it, Jeff. It'd only take a spark to set it off. But I looked down the hatch only a while ago. It's still dark where the gasoline's stored. That's all, Robert. Get below. You'll be given a bunk and all the food you want. And try to keep out of my sight from now till we set you down in port. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. Man, Joe, that gasoline is serious. Yeah. Jack wouldn't have stayed there if he knows it's on board. Goodness, no. He should have started back over the ice long ago. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. You can't tell much from what Robert says. We'll get a straighter story from Jock himself. But no matter where that gasoline is, it's dangerous. The fire may break through a bulkhead in the hold and sweep through the whole ship like a flash. If it does, Hans will know it. He'll order Jock over the side. Oh, they've got the breacher's boy now. They've pulled it up on deck. But I can't tell who's getting into it. It's Jack. Hans is helping him. Fine. Oh, I'm so glad. Boy, that's great. Oh, at last. McGregor! Stand by to heave the minute the jerk comes. But take it slower this time. It's Jack that's coming. Aye, aye, sir. You hear that, man? We're pulling the lad over next. Aye, 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 sir. He's ready. He's ready. All the way, men. Give her a strong, steady pull. Aye, aye, aye sir. Oh, oh, Jack, he's safe now. He's safe at last. Aye, there's no more danger for him. But the pelican may go down when he's halfway across. He can come the rest of the way on foot if it does. Sure he can. But, gee, I hope we have time to save Captain Hands. It'll be a close shave if we do. The flames are spreading much faster now. I'm sure they're sleeping into the forward part of the ship. Seems to me she's settling more. She is. The stern's much lower than it was. Tell the men to pull faster on Jack. He won't mind. McGregor, a little stronger in the hall there. You can get them here quicker without hurting them any. Aye, aye, sir. Faster, men. Speed her up a little. Oh, he's more than halfway here. Yep. He's past that open stretch of water he had to jump. I say. What is it, Northrop? I can see that stretch of water plainer than I could before. It's wider. Much wider than it was. Oh, it's been spreading then. Yeah. And I'll bet it was spreading when Jack made the jump. He knew it was. That's why he didn't try to come back on foot. Oh, of course. Aye, that explains it. Stand by the grabbing when he comes aboard. No. Stand back, men. I'll lift the lad down with my own hands. Listen to that. He's calling us. Yay, Jack! Good boy! Jack! Jack! We're waiting for you, lad. Well done, Jack. Oh, Jack, you're safe at last. I've got him. There you are, lad. And a great job you've done. Gosh, Captain. Send the breeches back quick for Captain Hands. Back with them, McGregor. Back they go. They were too slow in pulling me. I thought they'd never get me here. What's wrong? Is the pelican thinking? Yes. She's starting to settle fast. She's almost clear the ice. Captain Hand says she's getting ready for the final plunge. Besides, there's gasoline on board. Roberts told us that. We figured that it was his fault. It was. Haskell, a fellow in charge of the plane, started to fight the fire when it broke out. He told Roberts to go below and get the gasoline and dump it overboard. He thought Roberts had done it. So did Captain Hands. The captain only found out later that he hadn't. By that time, Haskell had been brought over in the breach's boy. Nobody else but Roberts knew where the gasoline was. And by then, he was too scared to go after it. Huh, the coward. I thought so. By Joe, then the ship may blow up any minute. Yeah. I wanted Captain Hands to come on the last trip instead of me. I said I'd take a chance on coming back across the ice. 
He wouldn't let me, though. He sure got nerve. Just as well he held you back. There's a spreading stretch of open water. I know. A couple of other places are starting to open out, too. The whole mass of flows is shifting all the time. Oh, look. The flames are spreading almost to where Captain Hans is standing by the forward mast. Gosh. They'll burn the rope before he gets the breeches on deck. We'll have another minute or so, but no more. Where are the breeches? Can you see, Professor? Yes, they're almost there. He's pulling them up to the rail. And he's got them. Gee, now if he can only get clear of the ship. If he's stranded out on the ice, I'll go after him. McGregor, get ready. Stand by the pool, men. Oh, if he'd only hurry. He's getting into them. I believe he's all set. Yes, there's a jerk on the rope. Haul away, men. Bring them home, lad. Oh, he's off the ship at last. And none too soon. I'll give her five more minutes at the most. Less than that, I'd say. When the gasoline explodes, the whole bottom will fall out. It won't be long. Look how the flames are sweeping over the whole deck. The men had better pull hands faster like get him past that open water. Yeah, we don't want the rope to give way when he's over it. Faster than the hull, McGregor. Faster, men. Boy, I believe we're going to get him here. Oh, I hope so. The worst is over. He's more than halfway across. Then he's safe. He can walk in from there. Aye, we'll have him for a passenger. I'm glad he's rescued. But I wish he could go home on another ship. Well, never mind, Captain. Have him in your power. I want no power over him. I want as little to do with him as possible. Gee, he's going to make it all the way. Just barely. Hang on to him, men, when you catch hold of him. The flames have reached the hawser at the other end. We've got him. I need no help. Let go. Where's the shotgun? Right beside you, Han. Oh, it's turn about, eh, Campbell? You rescued me this time. Or rather, the boy did. You never have done it without him. But we're quit, you hear? Aye, we'll quit. We'll forget the whole thing. Aye, that we will. There's been too much rescuing on his voyage. Like There's been too much of other things as well, Han. But your part in it is finished. You can forget that part of it, too. I know what I'm beat, but I'll take those faces about it from you. Look! Look! The pelican's going down. The gasoline exploded and finished her. Boy, look at her plunge. Oh, what a shame. Oh, ah, there she goes. That's the last of her. Hey, what a fight. That's the end of your expedition, Han. And what of it, Scotty Campbell? Only this. And put a no restraint on your hand. You can have the freedom of the ship till we get to port. I'm taking your word that you know when you're beat. Then say no more about it. You needn't fear I'll take any sly way to make a trouble for you. That's not my way, and well you know it. But remember this. There's other ships to be had, and the sea's as wide as ever. We'll race for another prize someday, and Captain Hans will take it. Maybe you will, and maybe you won't. But this prize is mine, and I've work to do to make it secure. Go so off with you and save your talk. There, you'll see no more of me than I can help. Scott! Look at Edgar. Set the regular watch. Push the lookout. We're steaming away from here as quick as possible. It's back to our regular course again, and full speed for the home port. <laughs> So the penguin is homeward bound with Captain Hands beaten at last. Will our friends reach for safely? Be sure to listen in at the same time next Monday evening to find out what happens next. Fellows, girls, ask your mother for Wheaties right now. Tell her Wheaties are the whole wheat cereal that actually supplies the same amount of heat-producing units you need for body warmth these cold winter days as a hot cereal does. Eat Wheaties tomorrow morning and all winter long if you like. Fix that famous breakfast of Champion's Way with plenty of milk or cream, sugar, and some bananas. you say, just like Jack Armstrong says, Wheaties and bananas are a great combination. And just one more thing. When your mother gets Wheaties, call her attention to the famous seal of acceptance of the Committee on Foods of the American Medical Association. That seal is mighty important to your mother, for it tells her Wheaties are pure and truthfully advertised. By the way... Many grocers are featuring specials on Wheaties and bananas this month. Ask your mother to get some bananas when she buys Wheaties for you. Eat Wheaties and sliced bananas for breakfast some morning soon. You'll say it's a marvelous combination. This is David Owen saying goodbye for Jack Armstrong and the makers of Wheaties.